theme, theme song. song. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Implications of Phineas and Ferb podcast. There's 365 days in a gap year, and you and he's gonna come and end it. So the once in a lifetime problem for us is find a good way to spend it. Making a podcast. Could it? Could have pretended to be them. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to the Implications of Phineas and Ferb, where we discuss the implications of Phineas and Ferb. Yeah, I'm season bringing, two, episode 12. I'm bringing that intro sentence back. I like it. Because it's funny. I still like it. All righty. Um, we are joined by a very special returning guest this time. One of our favorites mm-hmm. out of the four. Who is it? <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's <laughs> <laughs> lovely to hear you again, my love, darling sister. <laughs> Hello. Um, <we've, laughs> you were here for our last time travel episode, which also features a museum, mm-hmm. which you work in. So that's that's our so reason. That's, that's why we've brought you back. Also, it's about back for the a sister going episodes. absolutely crazy. So I'm I'm up for having you here as well. Yeah, yes. I've got so some works experience in, two ways. in that as well. So great. <laughs> yeah, you, you've got double the experience here. Uh, a very relevant episode for the dynamic that's going on here. Yeah, so Phineas and Ferb's... <laughs> Quantum Boogaloo, uh, which good fantastic name. name for I episode. love it. Uh, they don't bring up Quantum or Boogaloo in the entire episode, but there's plenty of Phineas yeah. and Ferb, so I'm still happy. Um, this is a very ambitious episode. Yeah, it's a it's all in one kind of story, but then again, it's time travel, so that never goes. This, this honestly straight. feels like like the second. Like the the original idea for a Phineas and Ferb movie, and they were like, "You can't have a movie yet. You got to do a second season first. Like this feels like a movie idea. Yeah, they could probably make a movie out of it, extend mm. it through, maybe in between. Instead of just having the one day, Candace goes sees more you days could... and tries to bust him more than once. And yeah, then exactly. Goes, oh, roller coaster. That's a good time. And also have some old Doof versus Perry happening rather than just the. It's not just it the sort. Just the, I mean, it's a very good joke that they're they're all sworn an oath to not fight Doof and Spurts, and then. Yeah, you know, they but just don't because they needed that to establish Doof as the emperor. Because even if Phineas and Ferb aren't balancing it out, Perry would keep do- Doof in check. Mm. But I full body cast for eighteen months. Yeah, appreciate well, that Doof and Schmertz chose Emperor as his official title. I I approve yes, of that. Nice. <laughs> so he went. He's upgraded from Doctor and he's gone to Emperor. Yeah. Doof and Schmertz. Yeah. Very nice. We should probably start with actually what happens in the episode. <laughs> yes. And it starts with the superstructure, apparently, which we never really get to see till ever. And they're like, we need a tool, a tool that we can't get right now. It will be around 20 years in the future. So now, a couple this of young point, boys who have done space travel and done all of these amazing things, they're like, should we make this tool? Should we, A, make a tool that hasn't been invented yet, which we do on a regular basis, or B, use the time machine that we have <laughs> and go into the future and just take one. It's interesting to finally see Phineas and Ferb just being straight up lazy. Yeah, just, <laughs> it's just like, you know, we already did this. We're just going to rely on our old ways. And poor Baljeet. Oh. He's been working on a time machine all this time. And, and they're they just like, yeah, him. we've got one. He's like, well, could have invited me on that adventure. Poor old sassy Baljeet <laughs> wheeling <laughs> his... Sassy Baljeet. Wheeling his chalkboard away. In his sad little that, face. That's an F. Um, <laughs> so they go forward in time. 20 years. And they, they go to Candace's place. And they're like, whoa, hey, Candace. And hey, Candace's kids. Did you write down what the name of Candace's kids were? Oh, so Xavier uh, and Fred, which are two very different, different names. names. Yeah. Fred and Good Ferb. memory, though. Phineas... Xavier, yeah, no. Yeah, really so it's not but, like she had an F and a uh, and a P, like to mm, yeah, she just mirror Xavier, her Xavier. brothers. Yeah, Xavier. Weird. Yeah. Maybe yeah. maybe Lint there's like a right writer name. with a kid named Xavier or something, and they're like, oh, we'll put this Easter egg oh, in. Yeah. And if know. there is, you deserve it. You're working hard on making one of the best shows ever, <laughs> and I appreciate you. And you deserve you've earned your Easter egg and much more than that. Well done. So to go to the time machine, it's the museum one. It's the one from the like third episode we did on the podcast, but it's mm-hmm. a little bit later than that in the actual organize, order of them because, again, yep, last season. Oh. <laughs> um, but And so it's the same museum, the ginormous museum that we've discussed with Ruth that is way too big for its size. Uh, and it's got the time machine in it that's perfectly working because mm-hmm. that's it's fixed and they left they left a working time machine unguarded in a, time, in a, in a museum. Well, they didn't know it was working. 
No, they they did. Mm. Phineas and Ferb did. They built. Oh yeah, they, they oh, yeah, fixed they, it. They left it there. Yeah, they yeah. used it, and then they left a working time See, machine. That doesn't seem to make sense when you think about it for the first second, but then you realise Phineas and Ferb don't actively contribute to always making their inventions disappear. They just do. And I so think they, they just probably left it just and they left... just assumed it would go. Yeah, exactly. Because why wouldn't it? Everything else has. I I am also going to we'll we'll bring up now before mm-hmm. we break down into the time travel and some other crazy implications. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think it it's a bit sad, uh, and I just thought of it. The reason they had difficulties in the first episode that involved around this time machine is when they were fighting the dinosaurs. Well, fighting, they were wanted to get back, and the reason why they couldn't go back was because there was no power. Mm. Which is fine because they're time traveling between the museum. But there is one point where the museum, where the time machine gets moved to the tip. Oh, and they can and still there's use no it. There's no power there. And where are they plugging it in? Where are they plugging it in? <sighs> can you? Isn't it just that? And I think isn't it the fact that electricity, full stop, hasn't been invi- invented in the dinosaur era? Or like harnessing electricity, whereas in the modern world, in the tip, it had already been charged. Did it run out of charge? Well, I'm being maybe, very generous. Maybe it's battery power. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, any 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 excuses to get away from this plot hole? I'm happy to hear. Well, so yes, hundred percent. Electricity <laughs> hadn't been invented in in the caves because electricity harness. gets invented, so it doesn't exist. Electricity wasn't a thing, so therefore it. It couldn't run on it, so, and in the future, it is a thing. So, of course, it could. I have an implication that's how, that's then, how Joseph works. and Lachlan. When you invent the time machine and lend it to me, um, yes, like yeah. Phineas Which and Ferb, yeah, that'll happen. Mm-hmm. Um, that's probably what you'll get your Nobel Prize for, I'd imagine. But when you do that, make it solar powered. That's uh, a good idea. Yeah, yeah, until you time travel to a night time and you're just fucked for 12 hours. <laughs> well, 12 hours, you, yeah. That would, or, 12 or, hours better than forever. Or, or you're inside. <laughs> uh, but surely yeah, true. We just wheel store, it out. Like, surely you store enough power. <laughs> that's that's, that's yeah, a big-ass battery. You want it? <laughs> What's the first thing you're time traveling with? A battery, so I can time travel back. <laughs> Touche. Big brains. Okay. Also, you mentioned Nobel Prizes like... The award that I'm not aiming for in life <laughs> is the Darwin Award. Well, it's my R. personal R. achievement. I'm what going is through. the Darwin Award? Uh, the Darwin Award is the award for being stupid. Basically, oh, okay. going yeah. going out, um, in like leaving this planet so, in a very dark yeah, in the it's dying in a very <laughs> spectacular way, basically. Yeah. Oh, okay. And yep. it's almost like natural selection, kind of in a very cruel. Oh, way. Oh, that's why it's called Darwin. Oh, yeah. 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 So, okay, so time travel, what time travel system is this on? Are we going to discuss that? This appears to be back to the future time travel. Yep. The so, exact same yes. as the last, ever, the last yep. episode is in. It's so it's just there's multiple timelines and you don't instantly disappear the moment that a multiple timeline is created. Yep. But you do need to fix the multiple timelines because otherwise, like, Candace disappears Later in the episode. Something that happened in the past does mm. happen in the present, but at the time it was happening in the past. Yeah. So, the like, with the footprint in the first episode, it was a normal footprint, and then they start riding in it, and then it starts appearing in mm-hmm. the present. Yeah. Similar stuff happens here, kind of, a little bit. Or, really. or they but influence the surroundings. So, for example, that time machine landing where it was and creating a tip... <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Um, and that's where it was from, was the tip, yeah. which was, again, a great joke. A little bit of an effect. There. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's it's simultaneous past and future time travel. Yeah, back to the future stuff. Yeah. Very nice. Um, Stacey is the president of Uruguay. That is exactly what I was going to bring up. <laughs> I was going to cut this. Stacey's the president this. of Uruguay, Ugu- whatever. Ugu- 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 Uruguay. Uh, Uruguay. Lama legislation to, to pass. Which sounds very stressful, um, but also how? How? What? What's the legislation yeah, is about? Is it not a rule that you have to be a citizen of Uruguay to become the president of it? Uh, it feels like that should be a rule, yeah. Yeah. I would yeah. have thought that's a, that's a rule. Uh, so Stacey, somewhere along the line, has moved to South America, spent enough time there to enter into to politics, qualify to qualify for citizenship. citizenship, enter into politics. 
uh, do all of the hard yards of going through a presidential election and be a woman. Be a woman. <laughs> yeah, in politics. <laughs> and um, yeah, so and win, and that's in twenty years. Like that's she, that's she's been putting that the hard yards. Yeah, well, well done, Ca- Stacey. Candace has two kids. <laughs> she's done nothing. She's done nothing. They she, don't even say whether the dad is Jeremy, so we don't even know if she succeeded in oh, one thing that's she seems true. to care about. We didn't about. even think about that. The kid is blonde. Maybe. So it could oh. have been Jeremy. Mm. I have pulled up the Wikipedia for Uruguay. It says, Uruguay is a South American oh. country known for its verdant interior and beach-lined coast. Where's llamas? Llama legislation. That, it doesn't it, mention... It, it's missing, right? You've, you, you just missed it? You um, just skipped it? You want to re- read it again? <laughs> <laughs> the capital, Montevideo, revolves around Plaza Impedencia, once home to a Spanish citadel. It leads to, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that one, but it translates to Old City, which has Art Deco buildings, colonial homes, and another word I'm not going to try to pronounce. I like and to think Stacey got involved in Uruguay politics because of the llama legislation. She wasn't happy yeah, with how they it's... were dealing with llamas. Mm-hmm. And she was about time it's a llama we, tra- we, we treated them well, I, I just assume. I would like to formally say, if any of our listeners live in Uruguay, write it. <laughs> Uruguay. Right now. Please. Uruguay. Please. Uruguay. I'm sorry. Tell us how to pronounce things. <laughs> Tell us how your llamas are going. Please, for our awful pronunciation. Will you vote for Stacey? Tell us. <laughs> Has she got your vote? Because I believe she should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm... I'm particularly proud of Stacey, I must admit. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's smashing it. She hustled and, and is doing really well. So, yay. Well, if you're the disco miniature golfing queen, you just <laughs> put that as your presidential campaign. I would vote for that person. I, I would vote for the disco miniature golfing queen with that sort of song and dance. That was yeah. a good video. Um, so, meanwhile, in this good future, mm. Perry and Doof are still fighting mm. and yep. there's not much Ooh, of note. Good. Apart from Duba. that, Duba. the really slow dooby dooby dooba. <laughs> yeah, it's good. And they were playing checkers at the start, so they've gone whole like Professor X and Magneto sort of style, <laughs> but with checkers. And he redoes it, and Perry's just asleep the entire time. But he doesn't cheat. Like he's just like, <laughs> I don't know how you play with a tired, probably dead platypus. Oh yeah, that brings up one of my implications. Platypus has lived for twenty years, seventeen in the wild, which means Perry is. Should be dead because yeah. 17 years in captivity, this is 20 years in the future. That's already a discrepancy, but also they got in when they were quite young. So yeah, there's yeah. a couple so other years there them. as well. But as we know, Tom Cruise is immortal and so he will be forever. <laughs> so he'll be fine. Perry. <laughs> he'll be fine. He'll, he'll be doing good. He'll just be a bit slower. That's it. Just I a little bit slower. Think, just a little bit slower. Think, I think Tim Tom Cruise will have a bit of an issue with you portraying him without teeth that he can throw at someone's eyeball. He may he that may is, have a bit of an issue with that. That is a good point because Tom Cruise has a beautiful set of he teeth. He really does. Fun fact, he has a tooth yeah, in nice. the exact centre of his face. That's weird. Is that? Yeah, his, like, his entire jaw is like moved slightly to the side and it looks normal on his face. But when you put a line straight down from the middle of his forehead down across the middle of his nose and to his tooth, he's got a tooth in the centre of his face. Is that? Is it natural? Or is no. that? Yeah, it's. Did he do that cosmetically, or was he born like that? No, it's he's born like that. It's just the way his mouth is shaped. Like my no, my see. teeth are slightly misaligned. Like that well, one's yeah, further over that be, side. But you've usually got a gap straight down the middle of your yeah. forehead. No, he's he's his teeth are just his front teeth are slightly. Right. Well, the side we'll get him another pair of the exact same teeth, including <laughs> that weird thing so, that he can throw. So in our live action version, <laughs> Perry still has his teeth. And his teeth are just Tom Cruise's teeth, and he's still in his Tom Cruise smile. But then he's got another pair of dentures, and no one acknowledges the fact that he's got dentures, but also his real teeth. Yeah, and he uses them to throw at people. Yeah, nice. 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 nice, nice. nice. Okay, so we've discussed what um, Stacey's up to. Uh, Buddy Candace has done nothing. Hopefully, marry Jeremy. If she's scored Jeremy, she's done well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we've. <laughs> She's not easy. We we respect mothers on this podcast and believe that they also are valuable to society. I agree with she, that. She that was working cool. hard. Th- those kids were literally doing nothing. Yeah, I would yeah, say oh, yeah. I would say raising Xavier and yeah. whatever the fuck the other one's name is would be quite an easy chore because you'd be like, "Are you guys doing okay?" And they'd be like, "Yep, yep. I'm sitting here." 
Yeah. Right, and I'm sitting next to They're him. They're quite yep. basic, those kids. But they are quite basic. Maybe she maybe she was so terrified they'd turn out like Phineas and Ferb doing things all the time. She went too far hard the other way and then they just don't do anything in her parenting yeah, and then style. It's her fault. They kind of don't bring that up, do And they? then her daughter oh, is God. like against it because I don't know why. She wants them to <laughs> do <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so Usually can't smell this in some version. So when Phineas and Ferb meet these two little dudes they're like you got to do stuff because it's summer boom we break into song bowling for super here animated versions we get verse two of the theme song yeah it's actually not verse verse two it's it's different again like this is a third version oh so this is a new version this is another new version like the one that they released that's the full extended version of the theme song is different to this one so it's just a separate part again that's cool. I liked it, and they did well. They it was it's a smashed. beautiful. They performance. just jumped into the mm-hmm. they jumped into the and they called it a gig. Like yep. not a single audience member. Well, we don't mind. It's still a gig, dude. A gig doesn't matter how big the audience is. The gig matters that you're getting paid. Oh, so we're just assuming Phineas and Ferb have like future money as well as present money. Yeah, <laughs> and then when they time, time travel, they're like here money have some that's, money. Money that's twenty years old is still. Well, it depend, depends what system and what's happened to the government. In in Australia, you can still get a $5 yeah, note from 2000 and hand it to someone and it'll work because yeah, that's we, that's we use our money. Money doesn't change that quickly. And we're a very st- fairly stable government. Yeah, and this is this future looks like quite a stable future in a peaceful place. It's yeah, in America, so they just so whipped out their exist. wallet. Yeah, these they were just like, here's just, some money. He, here's, here's the gig. Here's and the gig probably money. cost them a pretty penny because of inflation, but, you know, <laughs> at least they, <laughs> okay. they pay So them. the mum's still running the antique store. And she's oh. having a fun time. Actually, right? no, no. If we can stay on the song for a couple seconds. Oh, okay. Sorry. I did have one implication on the song. Okay. They say, making a portal to Mars, and then it shows them going through the portal, and oh, it yep, just pans yep. up, and Mars is in the sky, and then just a little Phineas and Ferb flag appears on the, on Mars. Now, that's all well and good, mm. but if you can see a flag on, from, Mars. on Mars from Earth, how big is that flag? <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> huge, considering Mars for us is... Barely a circle, like it's just a shining dot. They like were there just bigger for than shining three dot. seconds tops, and they had a flag up. That's no, it's it was the size of nations. <laughs> yeah, that's it ridiculous. Would have been huge. It would have they been. they didn't just go to Mars; they conquered Mars. <laughs> 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 and not in that puny little pissy. I got a flag. I've stood on top of it, and I put it down with a huge ass mother trucking flag, nearly the size of a continent. And then they put that up. As yep, you do. Fair. Okay. <laughs> well, the mum is just the mum is just chilling. She's yep. having a good time in the antique store. Guess who we don't see? Who? The dad. The, is what the do kid. we think? Oh, you went dark, mm. Joseph. I just assumed that is... he was like I don't know. Worked at a different place. No, because he he works at the antique store with her, doesn't she? Yep. Doesn't he? Maybe oh, he's on oh, lunch. No. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's he's just out the back while she's like getting pulled out of the antique store, time traveling. Maybe he's decided to retire, but Linda's decided to stick around to keep pursuing yeah, the passion. That, that could be it. That could be it. Yeah. Um, and we don't get to see Phineas and Ferb in their future. And their older selves. Oh, this the, this is finally the point for my bombshell implication. So I came up oh, with okay. a right, great listening. one while I was watching this. Um, she, they're talking to the mum. Yep. And the mum goes, I. Su- um, I suppose I could bust current Phineas and Ferb. But then again, Phineas is in Switzerland for the award show and Ferb's at Camp David. And then Candace cuts her off just after she says the words Camp David. Yeah. Now, Phineas is obviously off doing some award show. That's that's to be expected. Is it's it the Phineas, Nobel right? Peace Prize that's set in Switzerland? Uh, that's in Sweden. Sweden. Uh, oh, close. I so, thought, um, yeah, I thought she said Sweden. But I, I, she said, I could uh, be remembering she it said, No, she said awards. Ceremony. Yeah, so, so, some no, sort, no, some sort at of the very least, he's doing something very Everything impressive. Everything good comes out of Switzerland, so it must be good. Yes. But do you guys know <laughs> what Camp David is? No, I have no clue. No clue what isn't Camp that, David is, Ruth? Isn't that a NASA? No. Camp oh. David is the president's country retreat. Mm. For which so, country? For the US. <gasps> So he's just so the and it was where um, Ronald okay. Reagan invited Margaret Thatcher to stay when she came over. Boo! Oh, so that it's, was it's it's where yeah, world boo Margaret leaders. Thatcher. It's where but yeah, it's it's, Ronald it's like the <laughs> yeah that too yeah. But, boo um, everyone. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's the, essentially the holiday home of the president. So the the implication is that Ferb's the president of the United States of America. Smashing it. 
Easy peasy. I'd vote for Ferb. I'd 100% vote for He would stand up in the debate, say nothing, and get more votes. He'd blink, but his blink would have a sound effect timed with it, and you'd go, holy shit, he timed that so well. Because <laughs> it gives you when he always blinks. He probably like, says a lot more blink. meaningful things than any of current... Well, is that time yeah. <laughs> that's coming up in God, the Phineas and I mean, episode? I mean, it's, we, we laugh at someone who barely talks being becoming the president. And better you, than the old president. If you looked... At the state of politics, and then the politician got up there and they said, "I promise to just shut the fuck up." Sometimes, <laughs> I, I would vote for them in a heartbeat. I yes. don't care what side they're on. That's yeah, easy. <laughs> the green hair would sway me as well. Yep, I'd yeah. be like, if "This guy's pre- got style." If, if you're prepared purple to stand overall? on a stage with with purple overalls and green hair, you know, what? I'm I'm already sitting back in my chair. I'm feeling safe already. <laughs> He's got some confidence. Mm. He's 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 going to do it. <laughs> anyway, what I was going to say, he has the largest line in all of Phineas and Ferb coming up in the season in like Phineas and Ferb oh, when really? they're talking about Perry does this whole thing about trying to find Perry. Spiel. So I think he might actually just do one one decent monologue, <laughs> like the highest of highest speeches, like better than the one that um, J.F. Kennedy J.F. Kennedy did, the one that people quote that I don't remember. Oh, he said something important. Oh, you should not oh, ask, ask not what, what you your can country do, do for uh, your country. What your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. country. That he'll say something like that, but better, and it'd be a great monologue. And oh, I'm keen. And easy peasy. Your congratulations, your president. Like yeah, instant votes. It's the that slide. or he became president by just self and self enforcing him doing it. He just became the emperor like doof. I would also allow that. Like, I mean, <laughs> well, you I, wouldn't get much of a choice if yeah. I decided to just become the president of the United States because he definitely could. Mm. <laughs> he just made a machine that's like, if you've got time travel, you can become yeah. the president. Yeah, may as well. Yeah. Um, no, you're right. Okay, so we've discussed who... Okay, old habits die hard, I've written down. Yeah. Because old Candace sees young Phineas and Ferb and is like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to step over all that trauma I've had and should be over by now for 20 years, I'm going to bring it back up and I'm going to bust my brothers for good with the time machine mm-hmm. and I'm going to do it right and I'm going to do it for the first time. Is this Nothing's grown up, Candace? This is yes. grown up, Candace. Look, I've got so much respect for her because as someone who is probably even older than what Candace is supposed to be because if it's 10 years in the future, uh, 20 no, it's years 20 in the future. Years. So I'm still, okay, so about the same age... She'd be about five years older, probably. But no, probably no, about she's, five years she's older like than sixteen, me. and sixteen plus twenty is thirty-six. Yeah, and Ruth's... okay. So she's so so she is. She's How five old are you, Ruth? I'm, I'm thirty-one. We can cut this. <laughs> you're thirty-one. I thought what? you were in your late twenties. Oh, you that's a very yeah, very late twenties. That's because good genes. Early thirties. <laughs> good genes. I'm in my early thirties. Yeah. But um, yes. as someone who is in my early thirties, what you find is at about the age thirty. Things start to hurt and you're not as nimble as you used to be. It's a very bizarre <laughs> feeling. So the fact that that queen climbed up into that effing tree. And <laughs> a digital spy- tree. <laughs> and like didn't even, didn't even blink. Just did it and crawled Spider down. Spider crawling up that tree. I am. I want to know what she's been doing to maintain that because. <laughs> it's it's yoga. It's, it's physique, definitely she's yoga. She's been looking after herself and we respect that. <laughs> oh, I, I know. Bad, bad I know that, that she's very nimble. So that's another implication. What is her amazing secret? Well, what is her secret? <laughs> what is her anti-aging cream? It's all those sink to the faces she took when she was younger. <laughs> all those sinks that she just got hit with. Have made her like <laughs> superhuman into her thirties. <laughs> All right. Well, she's I know dense. what I'm gonna do next. <laughs> she's yep. very dense. You've just got to obtain the density of someone that can, you know, yeah, sink in snow and walk yeah. through it, unlike mm-hmm. everyone else around her. Mm-hmm. Oh. Gotta get dense. <laughs> gotta get dense. <laughs> gotta get dense. <laughs> so, another little implication. Just a funny thing of note. Um, Linda. The mum, she mm. says um, that she is on her comeback, 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 mm. comeback, 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 comeback tour. Two more comeback tours and you get a free pie. Yeah, so <laughs> it makes it sound like she's in kind of a retirement home, Millie. <laughs> and they're like, encourage you getting out with the comeback tour. <laughs> and I will kind of want to see it. I want to see what a... What is a Lindana comeback tour like? Mm. Oh, I... Yeah. 
<laughs> did, did the audience and, also get pies or just Lynn Dana? It's just, That's a good question. Just, she doesn't get paid in anything other than pies, so she needs to do like three more comebacks to make any sort of profit to even afford a single pie. But if 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 there was a gig that was like, if you come this gig, free pie. I'd probably go. Yeah, no, that's true. Hell, at this point in this goddamn pandemic, if they said there's a gig, I would be like, I'm going. I I don't care who's playing. Where is it? (laughs) Oh, good stuff. Uh, Okay, we should probably discuss what actually happens. Mm -hmm. So she does actually bust Phineas and Ferb uh, with the present, well, past as the very first adventure with the mum. The mum sees it. The mum loses it. Which mm-hmm. she's like, oh my god, it's so dangerous. And if there was all the ones she was going to see that were unsafe, the roller coaster is probably the least safe looking one because it's actually it actually rickety. looks ramshackle. Yeah. Whereas their other ones are like nice and pristine. They've done the extra yeah. touch. Like they're there. dangerous. They're going to space, but the rocket ship is they've top the quality. Velcro. They've they've tucked the seams. They've bloody yeah. They've done they've, it all. They've good. done everything up. They've added a little logo and all that sort of stuff. Whereas so the she gets stuff. busted. She does it. She calls them. Calls everyone, and that causes Perry not to be able to stop it. And so then the roller coaster stays. We don't know what happens with the roller coaster. And Candace is like, yeet, sorted, solved. I'm going to go back to the future, and I'm just going to enjoy it because I got the one thing I've been trying to get in my entire life. Goes back to the future, and everything's gone to shit. Phineas and Ferb are the reason that the world stays good. Yeah, I've written... Phineas and Ferb keep the balance. Mm-hmm. Uh, they balance out. They 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 are the chosen one. As well, it were. as um, if if I can do a little bit of deep lore, if we if we do this, as is canonized in Milo Murphy's law. Yes, Phineas and Ferb's good vibes cancel out <laughs> Milo vibes. Murphy's va- bad vibes. Right. Yes. What if when Phineas and Ferb get taken away, there's nothing to counteract Milo Murphy's bad luck on so the scale of the universe? So it's not actually Doof. It's not it's Doof. Milo's... Because it's shown, in, there's a later episode where Doof goes, it's always you thwarting me. If you don't stop me, I will succeed. And Perry goes, be my guest. And Perry does nothing and Doof still <laughs> screws it yeah. up himself. Th- there's a and point a where joke, Planty right? beats. Have you seen Planty, the household pot plant? beats no doof, but that's funny because a fedora accidentally lands on this plant and the plant <laughs> cannot move and he thinks it's a and he calls him planty because <laughs> that's what you would and planty defeats doof so doof will stop himself so mm. i think mm. that phineas and ferb are the actual reason that nothing has happened because the world stays in stasis because the milo murphy effect and the phineas and ferb effect cancel each other yeah, out yeah, yeah. when Phineas and Ferb get taken and so away and creativity gets banned. Milo's effect just stays and mm-hmm. then that allowed Doof to climb on top. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a deep law fan theory. Like it's got, it's yeah. called from all different But also stuff. in Milo Murphy law, Doof does do time travel and becomes that fancy guy and all sorts of Professor things. Professor Time. Professor Time. And that, that, whole, that whole storyline's mental as all hell. Ruth, you may be confused, so I'm going to use you as a surrogate for mm-hmm. the audience to also explain to them what happens. Ah, classic Please storytelling. Do. Classic <laughs> storytelling. Um, Dan and Jeff, after finishing Phineas and Ferb season four and the Second Dimension movie, they moved on to a new show and they created Milo's a Murphy TV show called Milo Murphy's Law, which is set oh. in the same universe as Phineas and Ferb. And it stars a character who has constant bad luck. He's so Milo everything Murphy. around him breaks. Uh-huh. Anything also, that can go wrong does go wrong. Yeah, because that's like Murphy's and law. And kind of in uh, the season finale of season two? No, no, it's the end of season one. End of season one. They no, actually, I think it's the first episode of season two. Yeah. They yeah. meet Phineas and Ferb. Yeah, and they, they discover that Phineas thing. and Ferb actually have a like literal... State so of the universe, quantum where, where aura Milo's um, like particles, I think they call it, um, everything goes wrong. Phineas and Ferb has the opposite, where literally everything goes right, and that's why things are just like happen and build and so make. And that's the actual break. explanation as to how they can do all this that's stuff, the how they canon. always get so lucky and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, but also in that doof inv- <laughs> invents a time machine and becomes Professor Time and helps people out Aww. to stop the plants evading. It's, it's, it's cool, but it also slightly annoys me because Doof is my villain and I like him being a dick because it's great. <laughs> and they've turned <laughs> him into funny. a good guy because they need someone to save it apart He's from the other so three. He's still so sassy, though. He's a great... He is so sassy. There's one I, scene I really which it. is hilarious. And okay. there's these three other guys that are from the future. And they're, we are they're, so off tangent. Anyway, they're here to help. <laughs> they're like trying to help. And Doof's there and they're trying to encourage Doof to do the thing they need him to do and become Professor Time. And he's having none of it. He's like, nah, 
I don't really want to do it. And there's at one point where he just, he loses it at them because they keep asking him to do things. And he's like, all right, all right, everyone put up your hand if you built a time machine today. And he puts up his hand and no one else does. He goes, yeah, that's what I thought. So we're going to proceed to do it my way. And I'm like, yes, (laughs) that is how you do it. I'm so sorry to interrupt. We have an intruder. Mm. He's going to make himself known if I don't just let him have two seconds of fame. Quick, say hello. Oh, good. Hi, kids. Lovely to hear you. (laughs) Oh, g'day, Andrew. Andrew. They say, g'day, Andrew. And he just did the weird winky thing. <laughs> like like, like Ferb does towards Isabel. Yeah. yeah. That's what he does. I did like that little joke. Ferb just takes it in his stride. <laughs> that he, <laughs> he's been to the knows. pub, so he's very pleased with himself. <laughs> no, very, very nice. But that's quite funny very, to say. Yeah. A man who works at literally two pubs has been to a pub, pub and is pleased with off. himself. Yep. Yeah, he classic. Is. Yep. Then again, so, but yeah. he uh, says hello. You can cut this bit out if you like, but also it's... <laughs> he's very pleased funny. with himself. <laughs> um, uh, sorry for interrupting. One... Please continue with no, that's what all you good. were saying. I'm done with Miley's Murphy Law. I do want to bring up phones in the future still have numpads and I love it that this <laughs> <laughs> was made in like 2008, you... 2009 yes. and they have this huge screen and then this tiny little numpad underneath it and I'm like, you were this close to figuring out what was actually going to happen, which yeah. was just all screen. Yeah. Your ratio of screen to button has gone down. That's a step in the right direction. Yeah, you're, you're so close to getting it right. I, we just, yeah. I think it's interesting how certain things are like people just don't imagine certain things when they're predicting the future. Yeah. Like for example, Star Wars, the Star Wars aesthetic isn't the future. The Star Wars aesthetic is the seventies idea of the oh, future. Oh, I love that. With the buttons <laughs> yeah, and yeah. they've still got screens and there's still VHS flicker in holograms and stuff. Like there's certain yeah. things yeah, like, that they like couldn't what? imagine being advanced. advanced there's no touch also. screens in Star Wars despite the fact that there's spaceships. Yeah, exactly. And this uh, is the same sort of thing. Well, so, but one that surprisingly gets it right, well, kind of, is mm. in 1984 when he predicts the dystopian future, one of the things is a big-ass mother-trucking screen in your house. Oh. And so, that's, that's where, like, you get all your propaganda shit. And oh, it's nice. So, it's a, so he predicted Samsung smart fridges. Yeah, so he predicted one, the fridges. <laughs> he predicted us having huge TVs because nice. we voluntarily put those in there. And Skype. It's a yeah. fancy version of Skype. There you go. Yeah. I saw very, very 1984 cool. on stage. There was a production that came to Australia. Oh, that's Side note. very cool. It was that would incredibly be... cool. The, they intersected um, uh, technology with the audience and positioned you as big brother. And then it was like, oh, wait, maybe we're also being watched. But the coolest thing was people were actually known to throw up at the end of 1984 because they did the rat scene. Um, which if, oh, you, if you haven't did read... They, did they do it from Winston's perspective? Yes. Or... So they showed oh, him you being tortured with that. rats. But you didn't actually see the rat. You just saw him writhing in pain and then they'd cut the lights and then there'd be blood, more blood, um, and they'd have like... Yeah, it was very, very clever. It was one of the most disturbing and brilliant theatre productions I've ever seen. So highly yeah, recommend. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I that's, also a, rec- that's a good... Sorry. Opportunity to say, go support theatres now more than ever. Please. It's, it's important. <laughs> go do it. Yeah. It's... Pump the money into the economy. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear that we're getting stadium gigs back? Great. No. Like the first, the first stadium show is, what's the date? Was actually yesterday. <laughs> and it was <sighs> like, the first one since March. And it was Ocean Alley at Kudos Bank. And I got free tickets to it because of uni, and then I couldn't go. So that's just yeah, because it's not in Tamworth. Mm. Surprise, then, fucking surprise. Next They're basically year. just pumping money to get the arts back up again in Australia. Yeah, so that's cool. Uh, any more implications from you two? Ah, uh, loads. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, oh. First of oh, all, okay, there's go. a thing called <laughs> Schmertz Mail, which <laughs> I love. <laughs> um, Schmertz and Mail. Now I also love. Whilst it looks like a dystopian future, as yep. an emperor, um, I love what Schmerz has done. If I was a benevolent <laughs> dictator, I yep, 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 would yep. make sure that museums were only allowed to be about me. That's fair. <laughs> I, no, think I that's understand that. Yep. Fair. Um, there would be no more There's a lot to talk real about, estate so. agents. Um, yeah, it's all good agents. decrees, mostly. Or, yeah. or post office. 
Um, all post uh, office, all I, post offices would yeah. be removed. Um, I would literally make everybody pay for my dinners. I really like that idea. Um, what about mm. the name change? What about the name change? Making everyone Joe. named Joe. No. You would be surrounded no. See, by Joe. Joe. No, not, not <laughs> Joe, but you'd change it to something else. You'd be like, Yeah, how Dan. did you feel about that? Everyone has the same name as you. Well, see, I, I know a few people called Joe. Is it weird? And I, I thoroughly lost. enjoy saying hi, Joe, <laughs> and hearing hi joe back i don't know what is it about it but it feels so good i'm like hi and like we're in passing we don't know each other that well so i'll be like oh hi joe and he's like hi joe and i'm like bye joe and he's like bye joe and i'm like this is good i like this this is the sort of interaction i like because i don't i don't have to pretend to be anything or anyone i know what's happening i know what he's gonna say next i know what i'm gonna say next and i know how it's gonna end and start it's easy it's beautiful it's good stuff but I couldn't do it if everyone's name was Joe. <laughs> it's so, good to have like one or two people. Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't choose the name Joe because all my closest people are called Joe. So Joseph, shout out to Joanna Kate Haddock, Dr. Joanna, Joanna Kate Haddock. Joanna, Dr. Haddock. Shout Dr. out she's to her. Very, very cool. Very cool. Doctor in bats, by the way. So she's a very cool yeah, scientist. We're, we're, wait, we're waiting for a bat episode. What, yeah, if there's an episode with bats in it, we're episode. getting her on. She is like very, very easy to talk about. She's one of the most brilliant educators. Uh, follow her on Twitter, everybody. Um, but the reason why I would want... <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Joanna. Um, the reason why I'd want everyone to pay for me because I actually think my darling boyfriend has already got on to this. So Andrew turned 30 this year and um, congrats Andrew. Yeah. Congrats. Three, we three guess how many birthday dinners he had. How many? Six. 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 Fucking guess that was how a many good times that you good. don't pay for your own birthday dinner. Six. None. He paid for all. He, <laughs> he paid for all pay six. For so he's already on to it. That's and such a good idea, right? Months and oh, months so wait, of he, birthday did, dinners. He, he didn't pay for a single one. No, well, yeah, that's not the point of a birthday dinner. No, okay. Well, then you just have a birthday dinner, but you have it once every month. What I would so do it, if I was the emperor, I would cut out the specific law to pay for stuff on the specific law that everyone has to be nice to me. I would just make my birthday. Every day. Every day. Yeah. Because that, that, that does multiple good things all at once. But yeah. that would but would that mean you'd get old every day? Older? But or would would it be a daily uh, birthday? No. Not an annual birthday, no, you, daily birthday. It's it's a daily birthday. I like no, that. but if if you if you had that you got oh, older no, but then would... you could say you're like four thousand and eight and I'm people would be like, And he's still alive and you're like, Yeah, yeah that's right, I'm, I'm the a... emperor. I'm immortal. Sit You'll down. never be free of me. Yeah, you know? exactly. And then people wouldn't rebel because they know you're just going to last forever. Yeah, yeah. And, no, and no one will think about the fact that you seem to be getting a year <laughs> older every day. <laughs> every, every every single day, the media says you've gotten a year older. You're like, they're like, well, let's not look into that at all. They just start basing the date on like newspapers and It'd that after your birthday. It'd be great because you get Grand to steal Emperor's Christmas. Three thousandth yes. birthday. Everyone would be like, "It's Jesus's birthday," and you'd be like, like "But it's my birthday. It's my be- my and birthday I'm still first. Alive, Do you know how so it's like, my birthday first? Because yeah. mine was yesterday, the day before, the day before that, and it will be tomorrow. So, <laughs> so this if one's anyone mine. owns Christmas, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> something that I really enjoyed in this episode yes. was completely unrelated to the actual plot of everything. The just constant jokes with the janitor working at the museum. Yeah. The janitor he walks and the past. bone. Janitor the janitor the walks bone. along and he looks at the time machine and he watches it disappear and he goes, sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's not. What do I care? <laughs> what do I care? And the bit where he's like, first day on my job and I'm already <laughs> seeing <laughs> things. And I'm like, bro, you are in for a wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to get... Screw it. It's nearly like the whole Candace things there, things God now, but with just one event and you'll just see these kids just jump on it and it's, uh, oh, well, mm. it doesn't matter anymore. I all did. Right. Well, that's all of mine. I so did so feel rich. a lot of relief for Candace when she finally sees how one of the things are taken away because she never gets the, the validation or the vindication Yeah, of she that. never knows how. And unlike Phineas and Ferb, she actually cares. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true. And it also gets resolved at the end when she goes to her older mother and says, look, I'm young. And she's like, oh, my God, you are. She's like, yeah, Phineas and Ferb did time travel. And you're like, oof, this is a really powerful moment. And then Phineas and Ferb walk in. So they were going to go there anyway. And they're just like, oh, yeah, hi, mum. And she's like, oh, 
radio, you definitely and did she make genuinely a believes that, which implies that she now knows just how brilliant both of her sons are. Well, yeah, and then she's like, oh, so all those horrible things, well, all those things that had happened were true, Candace. She's like, yep, and she's like, I am so sorry. I didn't believe you, and that, that that's, that's sincere. Really wholesome. Like it has it gives, to be because it gives Candace that little. Bit she of, totally you know. painted her own daughter as insane because she was saying these insane things it turns out she was right the entire time and then that feel good to be candace yeah it it would be a feel good and then she's like all right tell my brothers off and she's just like well you see it's not really that bad plus these aren't mine so (laughs) (laughs) this is this is a different timeline for a different linda (laughs) linda um so yeah that is all of mine got any more implications ruth uh i have a favorite line which I loved, which was Ooh, yes. I'm all the proof I need by Candace. I really <laughs> she's appreciated to tell that. Mel, I'm all <laughs> the proof I need. I, I, it's a sweet line. That can go on a shirt. Yeah, I'm yeah. all the proof I need. Yeah, I like Alrighty. that. Alrighty. Uh, before, now we've got, first of all, a plug. Yeah. But before the plug, we've actually received some letters, some mail. And. It has truly made my week. I'd like to shout out to to all of the people that wrote in, all two of them. You guys are fantastic. Yep. So, uh, one's on the subject of Outback Outtakes. Yes, the Outback Australia podcast. Give me two seconds From to find Joseph it. Yat. So, I'll, I'll tell you how a conversation with between him and I would go. See, I would say, <laughs> hi, Joe. He would say, hi, Joe, back. I would say, bye, Joe. And he would say, Bye, Joe Back. And then that is resolved and mm-hmm. all is well in the world. All right. So his outback, um, his email reads, Hi, Joe and Lachlan. I'm Joseph from Melbourne and I'm glad that the podcast exists. I just got Disney Plus and I love how smart the show is. I'm glad the podcast exists. Makes me feel a little validated. Yeah. <laughs> I make this because I enjoy spending time with you and my sister and speaking and doing all that sorts of thing. But... I'm glad. So it's not even that strong of a word, but I'm glad it exists. Let, it gives me validation. Some, some sort of validation. Oh, we've, the, the validation we've been craving after a solid year of doing this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I didn't grow up in Australia, so I was stoked to learn that you guys are from here. And I love the whole Outback outtakes because I've been curious on how accurate or culturally inappropriate the Aussie references in Phineas and Ferb are. Like Perry the Platypus, Agent K, Dr. Wombat, and Liam McCracken. See, joke's on Joe over here. We didn't do a single Outback Outback reference this entire episode. Yeah, exactly. Until now. It's yet another thing to die. (laughs) Animals are scary here. But but then he he does a bit of a call out for us. He goes, I recently watched Nature of Australia and I'd like to correct the notion that there aren't weird animals in Central Australia. There's goannas that look like dinosaurs that feed on venomous snakes. There's frogs that burrow in the dry earth and hibernate in membranes that look like plastic bags that dissolve into rainfall. And there's bowerbirds who've studied furniture design at uni and want to start a career in mating. There's even great desert skinks who build toilets better than student accommodation. (laughs) Which are such good lines. I'm Th- sad those are, I am so annoyed that we didn't come up with any of those because those are hilarious. Uh, and he's coining the phrase Outback Outtakes and he is welcome to it because our podcast is actually um, the Australian Outback podcast. So yeah. you can have Outback Outtakes. We, yeah, exactly. We've, exactly. We've got, we've got the professional one. So thank you so much for writing in, Joseph. We appreciate the email. You are Joe right about brilliant. all of the animals. Yeah. Joe, Joe is quite incredible, um, and we're not referencing everyone there like Doofenshmirtz is. This is actually just a person. Two, just one specific Joe, yeah. Uh, and then I've got one from Instagram, which is, again, mm-hmm. wonderful, because I am kind of on Instagram. And it's from Larissa Island, underscore Island. And I'm just going to assume she's from Ireland. Um, I don't think she <laughs> is, but if it's in your name, you're from Ireland. Uh, wow. anyway, Do you mean- she's like, hi, Joe. Well, the con- are you saying Ireland, I S L A N D, or I R E L A N D? No, Ireland. Ireland. You went full country New South Wales right then, Joseph. <laughs> oh, just, no, no he means Ireland, the country, uh, like yes, the one north of the UK. Anyway, she's like, Hi, Joe and Lachlan. I love the podcast. I've been listening to for a while, and it makes my boring work thoroughly entertaining. That is, that is what we were Once going again, for. Once again, more validation in the perfect way. It's not like, I love your podcast. It's a, my work's boring. You're like, oh, yeah. and, like, and, and you, you make it, it entertaining. And I'm like, like hell That to is the what end. I'm going that for. If I was allowed for. to have listened to podcasts when I was working at my last job, I probably would still have it. <laughs> <laughs> Except they'd have your like four performance reviews and be like, what is this podcast? <laughs> anyway, 
anyway, I'm a fan of the theory that Phineas and Ferb made a lake to make the beach and then used some wave technology to make the backyard beach. All right. That's a pretty good theory. And then she calls us out. Oh, no. We another get, call out. We get out referenced What's by a saying? fan of the show. So you remember in Perry Lays an Egg mm-hmm. when Candace goes inside mm-hmm. and comes out in a Perry costume? Yes. And we obviously, obviously, it's Tom Cruise's costume. And she yeah. just discovered one of um, Perry's old uniforms that he uses now because they are all costumes. Mm-hmm. And she rightfully points out that it's actually probably that costume she got from in Toy to the World when she worked at that toy store and she dressed as Perry. Oh, my God. I know. And I'm like, I can't believe we didn't think of this. As two dickheads from Australia attempting to be the primary resource on Phineas and Ferb. The leading Phineas and Ferb podcast. I feel outclassed here. Oh, she... She smacked. She just. We can't. We can't compete with that. That is exactly what would have happened. That is where it's from. We're sorry. We're not good. What, what was the name again? Um, Larissa. Larissa, if you would like to take control of the show, <laughs> just write into us and let us know. We'll we'll send you over all the details for distribution <laughs> stuff. You can do whatever you want with it. One hundred percent. Um, and yeah, she's like, after you guys were asking where the mum suit came from, because I did that whole question to you. Mm. Um, she was like, okay, it's finally time to message in. And even though you're calling us out, I'm glad you did. So thank you so thank much you for so coming Thank you so much in. for writing in. That's writing the sort in. of content that we want to see. So if you want to message us, you want to message the podcast, you can hit us up on implicationsoffineasandferb at gmail.com. You can go to the Instagram, implicationsoffineasandferb. You can go to the Twitter, of underscore ferb. You can go <laughs> to <laughs> the, the very cursed TikTok. That t- <laughs> it exists. God, TikTok. Ugh. We have a complicated so relationship with TikTok. Uh, it's very complicated. <laughs> Just turn the notifications off, it's, you idiot. It's a hard life. I've got to it's remember what life. is on my phone. Oh my god, um, that must be so difficult. I know. Also, if you if you do message through Instagram, I'll try not to accidentally delete your message. It's happened before. I'm sorry, that person. I think we resolved it, but yeah. But yeah, if yeah, if we don't respond to your message, just, just fucking hit us send up again. us it again. Even matter. I'm sorry, it's mm. me because I've got fat fingers and I'm not used to Instagram. <laughs> it's genetic. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm terrible with it. It doesn't work how I think it should. Speaking of speaking of you, Ruth, you got anything you want to plug? Yeah, no. any like. Yeah. 63 Globes, perhaps? Maybe. Uh, follow oh. us on 63 Globes. Uh, the the theatre industry is uh, not doing a great deal at the moment. Funny that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, But you can go on there to see future productions in hopefully 2021. Um, otherwise... And they, are, they will be very, very good because they're a very, very talented bunch of people. Out there. Uh, and I will also be there. So if you yes, want to meet Lachlan and I, yeah, that's probably your, that's probably your best bet to actually meet us. <laughs> yeah, we, Globe show. we we can't be anywhere on time, or but I can guarantee you there is not a single performance I will miss of Ruth's, not out of choice. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just um, I support your local arts, I suppose, if you can. I think that's a <laughs> as pretty long nice as you don't live in Tamworth. Do. Yeah. Don't support country music. Oh, well, Let it die go to, now. Go, you know, yeah, go to a show. If someone's playing at the pub, go, go down and have a, yeah, have a beer. Support if you're them, allowed to, if you're not in lockdown, do, do whatever yeah. you can to support local If you're in lockdown, artists. stay in your dang house. Yes. Don't be one of those knobheads who breaks the rules and then causes an outbreak in. We, I was, I was yeah. at church this morning. I know, weird. Anyway, there was this guy. Who, who came into church, because that's what happens at church. He came in late. <laughs> I'd like to add that. Uh, and so, of course, we've got quarantine ruling. Uh, and so we've got to sit a bit apart, a few pews and stuff like that. And the guy mm. the guy sits down in a huffle, like he's in a bit oh, of a he's puff. having a bad day. No, no, he's having a bad day because this is ridiculous, Lord. Absolutely mm. ridiculous. Mm-hmm. How can you worship the Lord if I have to sit in a different pew? Can you imagine? <laughs> Someone stole his seat. No, it's like he was going to sit normally, but they had to put him on the side because they were all full and stuff like that. Um, and he could he couldn't he couldn't quite see the the person who does the speaking, and so he he had to like move and stuff. Anyway, I found it quite funny because he was he's getting quite angry about these rules, and I'm like, bro, just just calm down, just chill. And there was one point where Mum and I um, talked about it. She's just like. Uh, I think it, we were talking about where we were sitting. I'm like, Mum, we sit at the back anyway. 
it's just like, yeah, but it, it, it's it's so weird that we were like all split up and that and it's further away. And I'm like, mum, I like it like this. It's good. I don't mm. have to talk to anyone. <laughs> I get to sit down. I get to enjoy it. Like, I just sit. No one's near me. No one. No one's like, oh, Joe, you've grown. No, I get oh, none of that. This is because of social distancing. Because of social distancing. Yeah, okay, so okay. You, you don't, like with church, you usually end up talking to someone because you physically bump into them. Mm. There's no more physically bumping into. There's no more conversing with old people. It's great. I there's love it. some <laughs> things from this pandemic I'd like to keep around. Agreed. And that's one of them. That, yeah, it is one of them. It's good. If they like started to section them off in age, I'd be even happier. Because then I'd be completely by myself. And then there'd be like 30, 80 yeah. year olds. It'd be and so good. The other thing I want them to keep is people minding their own business on public transport. Uh, oh, just like sticking back a little bit. You know, just has yeah. just... Just being a bit more chill. That's starting, I'd like if we kept that. It's starting to people starting to get a bit complacent in Sydney already. It's a bit a bit mm-hmm. of a worry. Um, one thing that happened at my work the other day. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. All the joys of working mm-hmm. in a museum. Uh, mm-hmm. in, uh, someone felt that they another visitor to the museum was a bit too close to them, so they coughed at them. In order oh. to show that they were not a meter and a half away from them, so uh, they Classy. were. Classy. Yeah, so they were like having a good. There's no cough, good guy like, in that situation, if, is there? If you were a meter and a half away from me, you wouldn't be worried about this cough, would you? Now, so that's one way you of wouldn't be getting with it. COVID if you were <laughs> further away. Yeah. That's right. I have it. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> like being. Oh, that's a bad situation, and that just just yeah. don't do either of those things, you know. No. Yeah, I, I guess I guess there's better ways of handling someone being you think too close to you than coughing on them. Perhaps would you please stand away? Yeah. Would, would you just, please just move a suggestion? Back on Maybe some words. words. Words tend to help tend to help you out of nearly any situ- any situation. I can't work out if that was the weirdest or the dude who took his clothes off inside the uh, museum did, whether did he was more weird. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, we, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. How, I'm how sorry. many just, clothes just, just, and why? Oh, oh, he... Well, when I saw him, fortunately, he had his shorts on. Um, but oh, no. okay. That, well, that's all good. Did then. they come but off But he later? had started to take them off prior. Um, <laughs> classy. Mm, and, Cla- classy. Yeah. Classy. It was um, It was the strangest... I was actually at lunch at the time. It was the strangest call I ever got of someone going, um, not, sorry to interrupt your lunch. Not sure what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, there's a man who started taking his clothes off in the middle of the museum. <laughs> what do we do? What? Does that, Ask him to does leave. That go, Why? Does that go against our conditions that, of intri- entry? And I was like, I think so. I would say it does. It doesn't yeah. expl- I read them. It doesn't explicitly say, please don't take your clothes off, but it does say you have to be Oh, well, I know what I'm doing next time in Sydney. You. I'm going to the museum. I'm just going to start <laughs> yeah. getting naked. What are you going to do if we start stripping in the museum? Actually, <laughs> just turn nothing. off the lights, bring on some lights, bring a pole, and just set up camp. Like, you might as well. <laughs> Every not? other industry shut down. Just set it up in the museum. You're still going government, <laughs> government run. You're still going to get some money. <laughs> and, anyway, we should we should wrap it up. We should wrap it up. I've got dinner, and yeah, it's yeah. good times. Oh Thank you very much for coming on the podcast. You've been it's been a pleasure. Ruth. So can't wait to see you both soon. Take care, and yes, um, hopefully sooner rather soon. than later. Yeah, speak to you soon. soon. I know what we've done today. I know, I know what, what we've done today. today. <laughs> good stuff.